Good morning, I'm Mikey Oreta and welcome to Follow the Money, a show designed to spark financial literacy and cultivate a growth mindset. Join us as we explore the tools and insights you need to jumpstart your financial journey. Now, investing in the Philippine Stock Exchange presents both opportunities and challenges, which is why it helps to have the experts on your side. We sat down with one such expert, the president of COL Investment Management, Marvin Fausto, and in this interview, he talks to us about how to navigate the market amid the current economic environment. On the equities market, where do we stand at this specific junction and where are we headed, given that the BSP is seen to take a less hawkish, more dovish stance on monetary policy in the second half, perhaps beginning this August? Yeah, you know, the stock market is kind of establishing its base, but now it's a little bit anticipating the imminent cut in rates. So a little bit of uh, stock market players are anticipating that already by cut by cut in August. No? So when interest rates are cut, uh, the, the relative investment of stock market versus fixed income is becoming more interesting, more compelling. Interest rates are really high now. No? So more and more, uh, people will be looking at the stock market once interest rates drop. But right now, maybe not yet, because interest rate is still high. It's still very attractive. You don't have to you don't have to think much. You just buy a government security, and you're getting a good yield. So for the second half, uh, as interest rates go down, stock market may continue to be more interesting. How much of a cut are you expecting, and and when exactly? Two great cuts by by this year, and probably another four rate cuts next year. So I'm looking at 150 basis points all in all from where we are now. And where will that take the market? Now, if you have a cut of, let's say, 150 basis points, your 10-year your bond will be around maybe five or even less than five. So with that, with that backdrop, the stock market will be more, uh, uh, as you say, relatively more interesting now. Meaning, I, I, I will look at the market at about 7,100 and maybe next year about 8,000. So that's, that's, the, that's the attractive uh, proposition there. All told, how is this second half uh, poised to be relative to the first half? Yeah, the first half is more challenging because people are just uh, getting by with the, with the high inflation uh, and high interest rates. We were initially anticipating a rate cut mid-year. At the start of the year, we were anticipating a rate cut mid-year, but that didn't happen because of high inflation, particularly bumped up by the price of rice. Uh, so BSP had to be more restrictive, and investors now would have to expect a little more delayed in, 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 that, in that policy action. Now, as compared to now, the second half, we are now more confident that the BSP will cut and our economy is kind of feeling the, the, the pain of that, of that high yield. Uh, and even the government, no? the government budget has been moved from uh, other services to paying interest because of the high debt of the government. So even the government spending is being shifted to others. So we both have the, the private sector having a bit of difficulty in, in getting demand from the customers, and you have the government now not being able to do certain pump priming activities because of the interest expense. Now that, that for, for we see interest rate cut for the second half, we will see a little bit more easing on that point. Okay, now on the topic of interest rates still, um, you've got the banks, you've got the property firms and highly leveraged businesses and companies that pay high dividends. Can you walk us through how each is seen to be affected by this pivot in monetary policy? The ones giving high dividends are will continue to give high dividends um, um, because it is, first of all, beneficial to the shareholders and beneficial to the investors. Now, with the pivot on lower interest, you don't, there's no much, uh, uh, I should say, pressure pressure to give give dividends as high as it was before. Now, it's going to be relative, no? So, if you're giving the, if you have a ten-year bond of about six to seven percent you will have to kind of uh, be somewhere at that, that level. Now, if rates go down, uh, there's not much uh, 
there's not much compelling reason to, to be giving that kind of high yield. And uh, businesses will now can, can reinvest their, their funds uh, as, uh, rather than give out dividends, can they reinvest in their own businesses as well. Okay. Um, what are the specific sectors where you expect to see renewed interest this second half? Sectors? For the second half, uh, we will now be looking more on consumer and even start looking at uh, property as well. Property might be too early, but consumer could definitely benefit uh, as, as rates go down, the, the consumer can spend a little bit more on other stuff. Uh, prices are down, so they can, they can move their budgets to other more discretionary spending. Um, we have seen that the, the hotels and restaurants are doing well despite the high interest rates, but, but the other sectors are kind of weak. Now we will see, be seeing that shifting as uh, things are becoming more stable as far as prices are concerned. So, so, so more on discretionary and uh, talking about consumer and even property as the second leg. The PSEI has been flat and some say that active managers are unperforming because they can't outperform today's market. What's your take on this? The difficulty in outperforming is really that they're just too much focused on just equities. You know? and just equities and because the fixed income is doing better. Now it has to be, uh, active managers should, should be more flexible not just on equities. I'm talking about also being flexible at times when the market is bad, like, like, like the way we do it in our funds, no? In our CRL strategic growth fund, we are more flexible. We can do fixed income, especially at the times when the market is bad. I mean, the stock market is not so doing very well. We've known that equities really do well over the long term, but not all the time. So active managers is we are well, are well uh, informed or better uh, do strategies more on a flexible kind of a strategy, um, moving to cash and even fixed income at certain strategic and tactical times, uh, but, but shifting back towards the equities when the market presents a better opportunity. How flexible do we need to be and how often should we be revisiting? It, it should be very, very, you know, depending on, depending on information that will come in. It can be weekly, it can be monthly, it can be quarterly. It really depends on how the data will come in. Like for example, the, the cut in interest rates is very imminent now. Uh, you see the 10-year bond has been going down by 50 to 80 basis points already. So we have the bond market anticipating that rate cut. Now, because of the fast decline in the 10-year bond and in the interest rates, we see an anticipation already. It will now move to the equities market, which is what we have been seeing for the past couple of weeks. So that is the, that is the situation now. If you had 500,000 pesos now to invest, where would you put it to work? If you have 500,000 now, uh, you just have to invest in a diversified portfolio. You will have your short-term, medium-term, long-term strategy, depending on what you're going to do with the 500. So we invest by objective. Your 500,000 has a certain objective. So if it's just for long-term, of course, it's equity, but it's a flexible equity investment with bonds in it. In other words, it's also a diversified portfolio. But if it's you, you need it for the short term. It cannot be done on, on equities. You have to put it aside on very safe and very, very stable uh, fixed income strategy. We're taking a quick break. Keep it here on Follow the Money here on the Billionario News Channel. Welcome back. You're watching Follow the Money, where we continue our discussion with the president of COL Investment Management, Marvin Fausto. And in this clip, he has some key tips for us. Where do you put your money now, given the lackluster stock market, a weak peso, and high interest rates? Ah, yeah. You put your money now first in bonds, but do not forget to invest in the stock market. Because when bond, because bond rates are do, giving attractive rates now. And when, interest rates go down, the bond market, bond price goes up. So you get more yield than that. But you should not forget investing in the stock market as well. So in other words, a diversified portfolio. Because when, when interest rates go down, the stock market moves up. So 
you don't buy when stock market is up already. So you buy it when it's still down, which is where it is right now. now. Yeah. Now, it's your supermarket. You can cherry pick. Yes, yes. So, but it, you have to make sure that you are a diversified portfolio. In other words, it's an allocation that you have to decide for yourself, depending on what, uh, where you are in your investing journey. Of course, when you're starting, you just have to be more. You can you can be more aggressive and as compared to when you are, let's say, on your retirement age. You can be less aggressive and be more conservative, di ba? So that in terms of the asset allocation, but be be diversified in your portfolio, whether fixed income, equities, and even local and global. Before I let you go, can you leave us with an investing tip or with some words of financial wisdom? Yeah, in, in investing, you really have to be focused on yourself. What, what's happening right now is that there are a lot of things happening around the world. There's too many information going to you. All, so your, your time is, is dedicated addressing those. So you have a lot of information, internet, is so you get a lot of these things and it's, it's information overload. Now in investing, my, my advice is for you to focus on the things that you do, things that you do well. Uh, for example, you're a teacher, you're a salesman, you, that's what you do. And make investing simple. Give it to the experts who are, who are doing it already. So you can, you can focus on the things that you do best. So that, that is what I believe how the investment in your portfolio should work. So you focus on your attention, focus on your, on your career, and then let, let set aside an amount. Don't forget to set aside an amount and invest regularly, but give it to the experts, the, the fund managers that can, can do the markets for you. Now, in investing naman, uh, it's not just in one asset class, no? Uh, you have to be a little bit more active we espouse an active investing. That's why we have a fund. It's actively invested uh, in equities. CEO Strategic Growth Fund is invested in equities. However, it is actively moving from fixed income as well when times are bad. So, because the stock market is doing very well over the long term, but not all the time. Uh, so during times when it is bad, you can be, you should be more flexible in fixed income. So, when you're investing, you do it actively. If you have the time, but if you don't, you focus your attention on what you do and give it to the expert. And just continue with your saving and investing and you will be okay. And before we go, we leave you with a quote from the Oracle of Omaha, a man considered as one of the most successful investors of the 20th century, Warren Buffett. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. And that's it for today's edition of Follow the Money. I'm Mikey Oreta. Stay curious, stay invested, and keep it here on BNC, the billionario news channel always on top.